Hi guys, this is Manas and I'm back with a new video on protection of solids. So this time around we'll be dealing with a new type of solid and that's called hexagonal prism. Right? So let us begin with the equation. I'll read it out for you guys and please uh, note down any data which is extremely important. Okay, it goes like this. A hexagonal prism base 30 mm side and axis 75 mm long has an edge of the base parallel to HP and inclined at 45 degree to the VP. Its axis makes an angle of 60 degrees with the HP. Draw its projections. Okay, you can rewind and again uh, listen to the question once more. Right, I'll note down what all important things have been given in the question. First thing is the dimensions of a hexagonal prism. Now, as far as a hexagonal prism is concerned, it is going to have a base, a hexagonal base, okay, and a hexagonal top, a hexagonal base and a hexagonal top, right? Now, all these sides of the hexagon, all these sides of the hexagon at the base as well as at the top are going to have a length of 30 mm each, whereas the axis, the height of the hexagonal prism or the axis length of the hexagonal prism has been given as 75 millimeters, right? So this over here is thirty, and as far as this dimension is concerned, this is seventy-five, which you can call it as the height of the prism, or the axis length of the hexagonal prism. Now, <coughs> certain other important factors which are extremely important to this problem is are uh, edge of the base parallel to HP. So you have to ensure in your drawing that edge of the base remains parallel to HP. Okay. Axis is making an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal plane. Right. As one more thing, one of the edges out of the six edges on its base one of those edges is going to make an angle of 45 degree with the vertical plane. Okay? Edge makes an angle of 45 degree with the vertical plane. Right? So let us start with the problem. And for this, I'll take this uh, to demonstrate as to how the object has been positioned. So you have to uh, assume this to be a hexagonal prism. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of a hexagonal prism right now. So let us assume this has a hexagonal base. Okay, you have to assume this. Although it's a square base, but you have to assume this is as a hexagonal base, right? Secondly, hexagonal top. Both of them are congruent to one another. This is height has been given as 75 millimeters, right? Now, what what's happening in this question is this this the axis from the center of this base top to the center of this base. This axis are actually going to make a certain angle, say like this. The axis is inclined to the horizontal plane at an angle of 60 degrees. Fine. So whenever the axis is in inclined to the horizontal plane, you need to do this. Okay, assume the solid resting with its base on horizontal plane. Please remember this concept. If the axis is inclined to HP, then assume the solid resting with its base on HP. And suppose had the axis been inclined to VP, if the position was like this, had the axis been inclined to VP, you would have done this. This would have been your initial position. Then, then in such a case, you would have begun with front view first. Okay, as far as this question is concerned, the position in step number 2 will be like this. So this will be the initial position or the basic position for step number 1. And the true shape of the base will be seen from the top. So you have to begin with top view first. So we will draw this top view and accordingly draw the front view. One thing which has to be ensured in this particular top view is that this particular edge has been kept at an angle of 90 degree. Why? Because in step number 3, we are, are going to incline an edge at an angle of 45 degree. So the edge will be inclined over here at an angle of 45 degree is supposed to be kept at an angle of 90 degree in step number 1. This is the protocol which uh, you guys have to ensure is happening in your question. Right? Let us begin. So as far as the hexagonal prism is concerned, it has 12 corners. 6 at the base, 6 at the top. So the bottom six corners, I'm going to write it down as one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, from here, if you see this from the front, the corresponding front view at the bottom, the corresponding points at the bottom, when we look at this from the front view, one dash, 
2 dash this is going to be 3 dash comma 6 dash this will be 4 dash and 5 dash now let us uh, give names of all those corners located at the top 6 corners at the top so let us start with A uh, B C D E and F so these two be this corner over here is 4 actually there are two points over here although you can you will be only able to see one point so B and A have a line here B dash comma A dash C and F this point corresponds to C dash comma F dash and this one over here is for D dash and E dash so this is all about step number one the initial position of the hexagonal prism which has been kept resting with its base on horizontal plane so true shape of the base was evident from the drop and hence we drew the top view first and accordingly we are drawing the front view next step is all about the axis inclination okay so <clears throat> as far as this question is concerned the axis is supposed to be inclined at an angle of 60 degree right what we are going to do right now is uh, <coughs> axis will be inclined at an angle of 60 degree something like this the axis will be inclined at an angle of 60 degree at the same time we have to recreate this figure we have to recreate this figure so if, if the axis over here is inclined at an angle of 60 degree this as you can see clearly is 90 degrees so both these angles the sum of both these angles should be equal to 90 degrees in such a case this has to be empty. okay so please remember one concept that axis inclination if axis is inclined at an angle of 60 degree then base will be inclined at an angle of 90 minus 60 okay so the base inclination is going to be 30 degrees so hence i have drawn this this is the base if i draw the base at an angle of 30 degrees then automatically the axis is going to set itself at an angle of 60 degrees so that's how we have to go about our task right <coughs> let me run this okay now this point over here is for 1 dash comma 2 dash 1 dash comma 2 dash and the distance of 3 dash comma 6 dash comma 1 dash comma 2 dash is this that's it then we are concerned about 4 dash and 5 dash from this point over here please take a careful look at this right so this is all about recreating the front view of step number 1 into step number 2 at a certain angle or you can say the base is inclined at an angle of say 30 degrees or the axis inclined at an angle of 60 degrees fine uh, let us see what next can be done <coughs> if you see this clearly this one over here the, the, these two lines over here are, are at an angle of 90 degrees to each other so hence if this is the line this is the line this is the line right we need to draw this line over here at an angle of 90 degrees to, at an angle of 90 degrees to this line so how can that be accomplished you guys have the luxury of a drafter you can keep your drafter mini drafter over here and the other scale one scale of the drafter will be lying along this line okay while the other end or the other scale of the drafter will be absolutely perpendicular and this line can be drawn from here and from here okay unfortunately i don't have a drafter i have to adopt some other means That's how I draw these lines. Okay. let us set the height that's the height of a pentagonal prism uh, sorry hexagonal prism okay that's it that's it now let us draw this line this line this line <coughs> okay fine now let us put the points quickly 
3 dash, 6 dash, this one, 3 dash, 6 dash, this one is 4 dash, 5 dash, this one over here corresponds to D dash, E dash, this one is for C dash, F dash, and this one is for B dash, A dash. Now we are going to look at this object in this particular position from the top. One thing is for sure that if you extend this line, this angle over here is 60 degrees. That is for sure, right? Now let us quickly get on with drawing the top. Okay, right, three more points from the top. That's it. Two more to go. So that, that's all we have. All vertical lines. Six vertical lines from six points, right? Now let us do this for the horizontal lines. One, two, and three. <coughs> now, six corners at the top, Hexagonal at the top, the top hexagonal will be evident, okay, and these lines also will be evident from the top. When you are looking at this object from the top, the hexagon over here will be completely seen, okay, although its true shape will be distorted because of this angle creation, right. So let us quickly fix all the points. This one A, this is A, B, and B, this, and this. This is for C, this is for D. And B. No, 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 no. There is some mistake, I suppose. This is for F. Fine. That's E for you, and that's B for you. Other points, let us see them. One and two. This is one, this is two, and three and six. This is six, and this one is three. One, two, three. Four, five. That's it. Now, as I've already told you guys, that the hexagon at the top will be completely same, and hence uh, we're gonna connect all these points for the topmost hexagon by a solid lines. Okay, A B B to C C to B B to E back to F. Okay. These lines, if you, if you can clearly see that these lines from uh, F to 6, okay, from 4 to D, from 4 to D, from F to 6, 4 to D, these lines can also be seen from the top. From E to 5, from D to 4, and from C to 3, okay. Some portion of the hexagon, the bottom hexagon can also be seen. So this portion I'm going to draw. So this is all I can see from the top, okay, nothing else. So the edges which cannot be seen has to be given some respect in the form of broken lines. So let us join them, right. So this is how <coughs> the top view of the object looks like, okay. In step number two when the axis is actually inclined at an angle of um, 60 degrees.
series with the vertical plane. This is how we're going to accomplish our task. Okay. So what I'll do right now is I'm going to draw this line over here and make sure this edge it lies on this line. If it lies on this line, it will be at an angle of 45 degrees. And accordingly, this whole figure from step number 2 will be recreated in step number 3, making sure that this edge 1, 2 is at an angle of 45 degrees. Right? So let's just do this quickly. That's it. So if this is point 1, point 1, this is point 2, point 2. Now, point 0.5 and 4. 0.5, that's 0.5, that's 0.4. Okay. It's 0.5 and 4. Yeah. E, this is E and this is, what is this? This is D, I suppose. Where is the distance is very this? This is 1. E and that's D, right? 1 and 2 has been joined by broken lines, so we're gonna again do this. E and D were joined by solid line, so I'm going to do this. 5 and 4 again by solid lines, okay? And let us now fix point A and B. from 1 and 2. Okay, this is the distance for A. So let us do this. That's A and that's that's B. A and that's B. Right? Make a solid line from A to B. Okay, what what what, what are those points which have been left? Mm, those points are namely F6, C and 3. So these are the points which are still remaining to be located in this particular figure. This is really a time taking process. Okay. So be patient. Be patient. Down. Now. Right. Point over here to see. Okay. This point over here to F. Right. So uh, now got two more points in the form of C. And this one over here is for F stands for F. Right? Two more points are left. So let us locate them quickly from 5 to this point. Okay, and below. Now again, this point, this point, above F6, and below F3. Right. Up, I guess now we have all the points. 3, this one is 6. And now let us join them. A, B, C, D, D to E, E to F. Now one two six wire dotted lines and two two three also wire dotted lines. So that's it. Now we have recreated this figure. Okay. Okay. No, this has to be joined. I mean. I think that's about it. Okay. This figure has been made here. And this angle 
is actually 45 degrees, right? If you rub this data, anyways, all the data, all the data have been incorporated in a figure, and it's now all up to this particular figure in step number three, and that is the primal front view. So all the point, all the vertical lines from one, two, three, four, five, and six have been drawn. Now let us start with D. The alphabets from D from E. F A that's B. What is remaining? D okay. E F A B now C is remaining. Fine. That's the last vertical line. We will extend towards B. Well, that's it. Now, what we're going to do right now, we're going to bring these horizontal lines over here. They will intersect and we locate the points, and finally, our top view, or rather, I should say, our front view will be done. Okay. Well, that's it. Let us fix the points. Uh, let us locate the top hexagon first. Right? This line is for D and E. D and E. Let us see whether it is D. That's D. D dash E. That's E dash. This is for C. And if this is if F dash and where is C? C is here. That's C dash. Now this one over here is for A and B, so that's A dash. This one is B dash. Okay. Now the points at the bottom hexagon 1 to 6. Now starting with uh, 4 and 5. This line is for 4 and 5. So 5 is here and 4 is here. Right? This one is for 6 and 3. This line. Right? 6 will come here. 6 yeah. This one is for 3, but well, that's 3. Two more points left, 1 and 2, and uh, they're going to lie on this line, x, y, nine rather. Uh, this is 1 dash, and this is 2 dash. That's it. As I've told, this is step number 1. Top view, front view. Step number two, okay? So we recreated this figure over here and then we got the top view. What we did next was this edge had been inclined at an angle of, this edge was supposed to be inclined at an angle of 45 degrees with the vertical plane. So we did this. So it's a, it, it's, it seems as if you can look at this square top. Similarly, you'll be able to see this hexagonal top, okay, from the front. So let us join all the points 
of the hexagon Right. <clears throat> now, see, uh, we are tilting this figure in this way. Okay. So this, the, the this edge, this edge I'm talking about, the edge A one and edge B two can be seen from the front. Okay, that's why we're gonna do this. Edge A one and edge B two. Okay. Similarly. Edge 3C can also be seen. Edge 3C as well as edge D2. So this is all you can see from the front. Okay, the edges which cannot be seen uh, shall be with respect by joining them with their corresponding connections with broken lines. That's how. We'll finish this one, right? That's it. This is how our object is gonna look like, and you can see clearly this edge one dash two dash edge lies on the horizontal plane and is parallel to the horizontal plane, right? Same time, this is the axis of uh, the hexagonal prism, and uh, this axis is inclined at an angle of sixty degree with the horizontal plane. And this particular edge, this one dash two dash edge, can be seen very clearly that this is the top view of this edge. One dash two dash is here. This inclined at an angle of forty five degree, which was also a requirement of our question. And this completely reflecting all of the factors are completely reflecting in our drawing. Fine. So this was all from my side. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And let us meet again next time with a new question and with a new set of ideas. Thank you for watching the video.